right, we're into the fourth chapter of your little book. If you uh, are staying up with us, uh, looking at praying tonight, looking at the, uh, the, the, the necessity for prayer for a healthy Christian, for a healthy church, we become a people of prayer. Prayer is our lifeline to God, folks. If we, if we, our lives are prayerless, our lives will be pretty much uh, extinct as far as it goes with the Lord. How can we, how can we walk with the Lord that we never communicate with, that we never fellowship through, through prayer and through uh, intercession and through meditation? How can we ever expect that uh, our relationship with Him can ever grow? And so I want to talk to you for a little bit tonight, and I really actually, like I told uh, Kim before we left home, I've got a very short uh, set of notes tonight, so we, uh, we won't be here very long talking about prayer, though, as, as vital as it is. What are you saying there, Brother Laurel? I'm saying amen. I felt some vibes coming from that corner over there. <laughs> oh, the flowers are crooked. Okay. How's that? <laughs> I would notice that. <laughs> uh, praise God. Uh, we need to have some serious prayer. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, maybe we need to go back to the altar here before we get moving. Uh, you know, our, Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We, we're, we're here to have a great time together, and there's not a thing in the world wrong with that. Praise God. Looking at Exodus chapter 17 tonight for a few moments, basing this study around Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 13. I want to read through it very quickly, and we'll go back and pick up a few of the verses. He says that Rephidim... Amalek came and fought against Israel. Now, be, uh, keep in mind that the Israelites are making their way, th way through the wilderness journey. And uh, they're under the leadership of Moses. And Amalek comes against and he fights against Israel. And Moses spoke to Joshua and he said, Select some men for us and go fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the hilltop with God's staff in my hand. Joshua did as Moses had told him, and he fought against Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. While Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. But whenever he put his hand down, Amalek prevailed. When Moses' hands grew heavy, they took a stone and they put it under him, and he sat down on it. Then Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until the sun went down. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his army with the sword. You know, it's an interesting little passage of scripture here, uh, speaking a great deal about intercession and prayer. Moses was the great intercessor. He was, he was, he was the go-between, if you will, between the entire nation of Israel and God himself. And and we see in this little short passage how vital Moses and his act of intercession was to fulfilling uh, God's, God's particular called out plan as well as doing it in victory. And I want to look at that as we're continuing in this series, I Am a Church Member. You know, and as we're doing this tonight, I'm hoping what, what, my, what my main hope tonight, my main prayer tonight is that each of you will make a fresh commitment to be a person of prayer, to be a praying church member. I want you from this day forward to commit to pray for your church leaders. Pray for this pastor. Pray for Brother Rolando. Pray for our, our deacons and our board. Pray for these who are, who are in, in uh, control, if you will, or administration of this church and leadership of this church, that we may make the right decision, that we may choose the right path, that we may follow that to which God has called us to go down. And uh, I, I know that it is... Um, it is very difficult for a truly praying heart to speak evil and negativity against someone else. So 
Uh, if you're really praying, it will be very difficult for you to be coming against us in a negative way. But you will want to strengthen and build up and encourage because that will be the way the Spirit of God is directing you to go. I want to look at this passage of Scripture for just a few moments tonight, and I pray that what we will recognize in this is that there is strength available to all of us if we will simply put our trust completely into God for His help. I don't know about you, but I've had a rough week. You know, I did a lot of traveling this week, had a lot of things happening, a lot of things going on. It's been a, it's been a rough week, but it's been a good week. It's been an enriching week. And, uh, you know, in and through all of this, I could pray and I could reach out to God. And whether the day was going great or the day wasn't going so well, I, I could always reach out to God throughout the week and trust in Him for His help, for His guidance, for, for His strength. And that's available to all of us, folks. And, and we're going to see here in this passage as well that sometimes when we're not strong enough to continue praying, we're overwhelmed. That's when we step in as brothers and sisters. That's when we come alongside of, and rather than tearing down, rather than trying to be uh, negative uh, towards an individual that's in great need, rather we will lift them up. As, as Aaron and, and Hur did for Moses when his arms became weak and he couldn't intercede, he couldn't pray the way he needed to, they came alongside of him and they stepped up to the plate and they began to assist him and to strengthen and encourage him. And, and that's a very vital part of us being ch uh, church members, coming together for one another. Standing in the gap for one another, standing up for one another, interceding for one another, that the power and the strength of God may be manifest among us and in our midst, and we may find the victory in all things. As we begin this evening, I want to notice the grave responsibility that Moses assumed in the midst of what was happening here in this particular passage. In verse 9, we, we go back and we see that Moses said to Joshua. Now Joshua was, uh, was Moses' trainee. He was his right-hand man because when Moses passed on, who was it that the mantle was passed to? Who took over control and leadership as they moved into the promised land? It was Joshua. Joshua just didn't come by his leadership skills by osmosis, folks. He watched and he learned from the great Moses. He watched Moses' life and he learned from his life. He learned from his prayer life. He learned from, from, his, from his dedication and his commitment to God in order that he may be the leader that God was calling him to be. And that's what we all do. We learn from one another and we, we become more educated and, un, and understanding in, in the things of, of the scripture and the leadership and all of these things by watching one another and learning and 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 passing this along and it's a great torch to pass along folks we've got a younger generation that's going to one day lead this church into the next generation and the next generation we need to be raising up young people who can lead who have the ability to understand the Word of God to to teach the Word of God we need to be building up and, and growing up young people right now who, who, are, who are becoming little teachers and little instructors to one another because they're beginning to get a grasp of the Word of God. You see, the church is really only one generation away from extinction. It only takes one generation of failure and the church will go extinct. We can't allow that to happen. That's a heavy responsibility we all have as adults to be raising up a generation. So Moses says to Joshua, he says, Select some men for us and go fight against Amalek. He said, Tomorrow I'm going to stand on the hilltop with God's staff in my hand. You remember that staff went with him. When God called Moses, he grabbed that staff up and it was that staff that became the serpent. The serpent that ate the staves uh, that were turned to serpents of the wise men in Pharaoh's court. 
That staff was a sign of the power and the presence of God going with Moses. And so he's got that staff in his hand and he says, I'm going up on the hilltop tomorrow. The, I'm going to take the high place where I can watch down and see the battle that's going to take place. What we see here is that Moses was God's chosen leader. There's got to be a leader. You know, if, you're, if you have no leader, think about a military uh, endeavor. If there is no leader, there is no one to gather the troops and to put together a, a battle plan in order to gain some type of victory. It's the same in the church. It's the same in your workplace. It's the same wherever you go. Somebody's got to be leading, if you will. And, and Moses was God's chosen leader. God had called him out, sent him into Egypt. He went through all the ten plagues and then he led the people out. He held the staff high over the Red Sea as the waters were parted by the power of God. That staff went before him, holding it up as a sign of the power and the strength of God Almighty. But Moses had a responsibility to God. He was responsible and it was an extremely important responsibility, a grave responsibility, if you will, that he had. And those of us in leadership in this church, we have a responsibility as well. We have a responsibility for the ongoing of this church. We have a responsibility for, for the finances and for, for all the various things that make up this church. But above all of that, we have a responsibility to you, the people, you, the congregation, as well as to the lost people all around us who need this church to step in and to share Jesus with them. Folks, we all have a responsibility as children of God. We see Moses fulfilling that responsibility. He's, he's getting old by now, and he treks up the hill. He's still got the strength in his, in his legs and his arms to trek up the hill and stand there under the power and the anointing of God. Now Moses, in this position he took, was one of intercession. He was interceding. He was, he was praying to God. His hands were raised up, and we'll get into that a little bit more here, but he would raise his hands up in, in prayer and intercession unto God, standing there as the mediator, if you will, between the battle and Almighty God that would hold the key to victory. He was that point man, if you will, who was the vital part, the vital, the vital piece, that, that, that met between God and the battle down here. And as long as Moses was praying and interceding, the battle was going forward and the Israelites were winning. Moses also standing up on that high hill was an inspiration to those younger guys down there fighting the battle. They could look up and they could see this, this very elderly man standing strong, standing before them, standing before God for them. And that was an inspiration to them. Leaders of this church, listen, we need to inspire. Adults, we need to inspire our young people. We need to inspire them to stand strong. It was interesting this morning, I was talking to Nellie for a few moments, and, and she shared with me that one of her students had come up to her, uh, I believe she's a middle school teacher, right over here, Rohando said one of her students had come up and was talking to her, and he's a student that, that comes to church here. And two other students walked up, and, and I don't know exactly how the conversation got underway, but somehow these two others that came up there found out that this boy went to church. And they started making fun of him right there in front of Nellie. And, and he looked at one of them and said, yeah, well, you used to go to church there too. He said, yeah, but I don't anymore. I don't need that stuff anymore. And Nellie said, you know, I was very limited in what I could say because my hands were tied as a teacher in the public school system as to what I could say. But she said that just the look on this child's face as these two berated him. She said, I, you know, I was able to, to put out the fire, if you will, but I really couldn't encourage them in any way. Uh, for, the, for the cause of the church. And she said it, it really saddened her heart to what was happening to this one boy because he goes to church. Folks, we, we don't understand the, battle, the, the battleground that the schools are for our kids. 
how tough it can be, especially for kids who are trying to be morally upright, who are trying to take a stand, who are trying to do these things that, that they know in their heart they should be doing and the lives they should be living. And, and I just praise God that Nellie has taken up the torch and, and she is, uh, she's working on becoming the FCA director there at the middle school. They, I don't know how long it's been since they've actually had one there, but, but I know that, that in the past it's always been someone for, from the Catholic Church. I, I encouraged Nellie. I said, Nellie, I, I would love to see somebody from an evangelical church leading our youth in this city and leading the, leading the, the, the march forward. And, and she picked that torch up and she is, uh, she's in the process of going through, through the, the application process to get that FCA charter uh, going here at the school. The principal is 100% behind her and, and uh, you know, cheering her on, if you will. We need to pray for Nellie. We need to pray for wisdom for her and, and for that student body that she will be working with there in that capacity. And, and it will give her much more of an open door to be able to share things with these particular students who choose to, to join that FCA chapter. I'm just really excited about this for her and, and for, for the, the inspiration that we can be to Nellie and to those kids. So Moses was interceding, he was inspiring, and, and Moses was instrumental to the success here. Uh, you know, he was, his, his being there was instrumental to there being a victory. Folks, we are an instrumental part of this church, all of us. If you're, if you're a member of this church and you are faithful to this church, you are instrumental in this church being successful. What you choose to talk about, how you choose to talk about the church, uh, you know, who you choose to talk about the church with, all of these things are instrumental to the success or the failure of the church, to how we look to others. And I know that there are some in our midst that have chosen to speak very negative about our church. And, and I pray for these individuals and I'm aware of who some of them are. And I, I pray very hard for these individuals that we will learn to lift up our church rather than tear our church down. Amen. You know, the church is, is having a tough enough time in the world today as it is without its own members tearing it up, chewing it up, and spitting it out. Yeah. Rather than building up other bodies around about us, we're tearing one another down. Folks, let me tell you, we're going to stand in harsh judgment before God one day for the things we've said about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the people that we have decided to team up with and speak negative about the church. You know, I, I, I hate to say this, but it comes from my heart, you know. If you really don't want to be a part of this church, then what you become is very hurtful to this church. Mm -hmm. And and sadly, I, I have to say that if your heart is at another church, you know, it may do us all better if you should determine. And I, I hate to say this. But I've got to think of our body. I've got to think about what's going on in our midst. Church, we want to go forward. We've Amen. got a great mission ahead of us. And we can't slow down. We need to move forward, and we must be positive to do so. We must be inspirational to one another. We must be building one another up. You may not necessarily like everything we're doing. We're going through change, and we have changed back in some things. We have, we have constantly worked our way to try to continue for, moving forward while at the same time not hindering how each of us is able to worship. We've got a lot to do. We don't want to be hindered. Satan would have nothing not, would would have nothing better to do than to hinder the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to do that through people. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful that we do not become an instrument of Satan to tear down and to destroy the work of the Lord. The primary role of church leaders goes beyond what is the obvious. Certainly we have, you know, I have a role to preach and to teach. 
and to visit and these other things, but intercession is also a primary role for all leaders within the church. We as leaders, those of you who are leaders out there, I want to encourage you to be people of prayer, praying for your church, all of you. I encourage you to pray for your church, pray for your leaders, pray for our communities, pray for your own neighbors and your, your enemies and those who like you. Pray for them all. Lift them up before the throne of God that we may make inroads into the world around us. Inspiration by example is another role. We need to inspire one another, build up one another, leading so as to be successful in all things before God. Next, we see that Moses' prayer rendered God-sized results. You see, Moses was standing up there and, and it was not in vain. He was standing there with his hands raised before God because he wanted the victory. He knew God was a God of victory. And the scripture tells us, beginning in verse 10 and verse 11 says, Joshua did as Moses had told him, and he fought against Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. While Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, but whenever he put his hand down, Amalek prevailed. The truth played out before us is that prayer is crucial to victory. Prayer is crucial to victory. Mm -hmm. For our church to be an overcoming church, we are going to be a people of prayer. Prayer is perhaps one of the most difficult things that we do. It's not that hard to pick up your Bible and read a passage or two. It's not that hard to say a kind word to somebody or even to reach out to a needy person. But it seems to be very difficult for us to just get down and rend our hearts before God. And yet, that is the single most important thing that we as believers should be doing. That is where our power is. That's where we get our recharge, folks. We have all these lithium batteries nowadays, and they last for a long time, but eventually they begin to wind down. You've got to plug them into a charger and give them a, give them a shot, folks. We all need to be plugged into the charger of heaven. So that we can get recharged. So that we can be ready for the battles that will ensue. We need to understand that when a believer goes out into a non-believing world, we're going to be confronted by the evil of that world. Mm -hmm. Our power source is God Almighty. It's not by my, my might nor by my power, but it's by His Spirit. And we need to understand that. We need your Spirit. We need your power today, God. Empower me for whatever it is I'm going to be facing today, Lord. Let me tell you, folks, the Lord already knows what you're facing tomorrow. So it's best to go ahead and take it to Him. God, you know everything and everybody that is going to come against me tomorrow. And I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you will give me the things to say. You will give me the strength I need. You will give me everything that I need to face the evil that is going to confront me tomorrow for the name of Jesus Christ. When Moses' hands were raised in intercession, in prayer, the Bible tells us they, they were being victorious on the battlefield. Victory was reigning. But when his hands became heavy, they began to fall. That sign of intercession, that sign of prayer, that inspiration to those on the field caused them to begin to lose the battle. Prayer is crucial to the workings within our church. When we're on our knees in prayer for the church, victory will be ours. Folks, I want to encourage you to begin praying. Begin praying tonight, tomorrow morning, and all through this week for next week's services. Be praying for, for, for our church and, and for our finances. and for Be praying for the lost people around us that God will send them in to hear the word. And that God's spirit will touch and prick their hearts and they'll come and find Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Folks, when we fail to trust God through prayer, we find ourselves struggling through defeat. A thought to go along with all of this, uh, something uh, interesting that I read, it says Satan laughs at our toil, he mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. See, Satan understands the power of prayer. 
He knows the power of God. He used to be right beside him there in heaven serving him. He knows the power that is that God has and that he is defeated when God steps in. Finally, we realize that God often brings others alongside to carry out a necessary role. Verse 12 says, When Moses' hands grew heavy, they took a stone, they put it under him, and he sat out on it. Then Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until the sun went down. Can't you see these guys? Moses sits down on this rock and these guys get out there and they hold his hands out. You see, they recognized what was going on as long as Moses' hands were raised. Let me tell you, you want to see things begin to really take on a very positive uh, perspective in our church and begin to move in a very positive direction. Begin to lift up the hands of your pastor and your leaders. Begin to pray and to intercede on our behalf and to support what we're doing rather than to try to tear down. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we're going to begin to see victory after victory after victory. Amen. We're going to see our church grow. We're going to see our community transformed by the power of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But it takes a willingness, a desire within our own hearts, the hearts of all of us, to be willing to get down on our knees and to intercede and to pray and to hold up those hands of our pastor and our leaders. As the battle raged on, Moses grew tired. It lasted all day long. How many of you have tried to hold your hands over your head for a while? And after a little while, they start getting heavy. You know, the blood starts getting out of your fingers. They begin to tingle things. You know, before long, they're down, 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 down. They get so heavy. Well, that's what was happening to Moses out here. And so they recognized this problem and his prayers began to falter. His intercession began to falter and these two guys jumped into action. Moses didn't have to say, hey guys, help me out here. These guys recognized there was a need here. And they jumped in and they began to meet that need. We got to get these hands back up. We got to win this battle. We got to be, be helping out our pastor and our leadership. We need to be standing on their behalf and praying for them. Amen. And that's what they did. They jumped into action and they got those hands up. Let me tell you the thing that's most lacking in today's church is prayer warriors. <coughs> Ask Brother Gary how hard it is to get men out to pray on Saturday morning. Very difficult. We need individuals, men and women, children, teenagers, who know how to reach the heart of God. I would love to get to the place in our church where we walk in and we see people already gathered around the altars before service even starts praying for that service that's yet to come. And I'd like to see people around those altars still praying as people are leaving out the doors. Because we begin to recognize how vital that prayer is to our church and to things happening in our church. I want to encourage all of you right now to be praying for, Saturday, uh, for Tuesday night's uh, spectacular event and the tracks we will be handing out. May, may every one of these tracks hit home with somebody. Yes. May we that are out there say something that will touch one of those lives in a positive way. I beg of you, just pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastor. When somebody begins to say something negative to you, I would encourage you to say something positive. About your church they say a positive thing there are going to be people who have heard things people who have actually been engaged in services here at some point or another who are going to have very negative feelings against this church and some of the people in this church but every one of you has a choice as to what your response will be when these individuals talk to you I hope, my prayer is that you love, number one, the Lord of the church, number two, his church, 
Number three, the people of the church as much as the Lord does, and rather than tearing down, you will build up. Amen. Amen. Rather than trying to say something negative or continuing the conversation with these individuals, I would encourage you to just shut it down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. That's my church. That's my pastor. I love them. I'm a part of that, and I'm a part of what that, what that church and that pastor is, is leading us to do. I stand behind him. May not necessarily always agree with him, but I stand behind him. Amen. Because we're not always going to be in 100% agreement, but we still need to uphold one another. We still need to be positive about one another. Listen, as I, as I close tonight, Oswald Chambers said, Prayer does not fit us for the greater work. Prayer is the greater work. Mm -hmm. Hardest thing we'll do is pray. But out of that prayer will come the victories. And verse 13 tells us that Joshua defeated Amalek and his army with the sword. Why? Because the leader was faithful. Because the army, the military was faithful. They carried through. They did what was right. Prayer is the key to victory, church. For our church to overcome the enemy and to move along in victory, we've got to determine to be a people of prayer. Perhaps it's the most vital component in every church, and yet it's often the most missing component. It's much too often relegated way down the list until it simply doesn't happen. We never really get around to it. By the time we go to bed at night, we're too tired. That's why we need to, before we roll out of bed, begin to pray. <clears throat> Say, God, you know what's ahead of me today. I just pray, Lord, that you prepare me and that you go before me. God, that I have victory in your name in everything. May we, church, realize the true importance and the value of prayer. And may our hearts come to recognize just how greatly needed prayer is to all of us and to our church as a whole and may we dedicate ourselves to pray for one another to pray for our church to pray for our leaders and to pray for our endeavors that god's name may be lifted up in all things amen amen, amen. join me in prayer father in heaven